Good evening, everyone. Know what is in thy sight. And what is hidden shall be revealed to you. The Master in the Gospel of Thomas. When you know that whatever is presenting itself to you is God, not has to become God, even in experience. You see, there's no difference between God and experience. And if there still is in our belief or our consciousness, that's why we're unable to witness God as that which presents itself to us. But when we know that that which is presenting itself to us is God, and we know that God is incorporeal, not the corporeality that seems to be, but that God is incorporeal, simply being sensed corporeally, And that when we withdraw all belief from that corporeal sense, nothing can stop God, the incorporeal, from being sensed correctly, then we rest in the all completeness of God not wanting something for that which is presenting itself to us even though its appearance may be in a terrible state of illness discord poverty injustice it doesn't matter when we know the truth when we know what is in front of us and rest in its truth. Rest as the fulfilled state of being and vision and experience. Then, indeed, we have released earth. We've released the corporeal sense. And it is now able to be. In fact, nothing in the universe can stop it from being. It's truth in our experience, the image and likeness of God. Right here in our experience. In other words, as the Master has said, nothing that is hidden, nothing of God, nothing of truth, nothing of the image and likeness itself of God will remain hidden. Well, I think that's our class. Shall we say goodnight? We could. What more do we need? We'll probably have more, <laughs> of course just as an excuse to gather here together for the hour because there is nothing quite like it in the whole of experience being together being with you being with the spiritual family resting in the truth with the spiritual family Give me half a chance and I wish to be here with you. 
in experience. We're always here together. We are the one. But as the Master said, where two or more of you gather together, there am I amongst you. It just shows that even in the Master's experience, there was something special about and something miraculous revealed when we in experience gather together. I am the light of the world. In other words, shine your light forth and recognize that that light, your radiance of being, is all, is all truth. There is no more truth to experience to any being, body, form, than the light, in the Master's words. What is I? What is the light? The incorporeal. Therefore, shine your light forth. Shine your incorporeality forth. And make it, in your living awareness, the only about everything of experience, every form, every being. Make the incorporeal the only. You can imagine shining a torchlight in the dark. And witnessing that wherever that light is shining, there exists just light. Everything is light, or let's say, illumined. And for our purposes, we need to realize that everything illumined is of the light. Nothing is different from the light. Indeed, the sun cannot shine forth as dark or cold. The sun shines forth as itself, holy as itself, of itself. The light of being the incorporeality of truth, of being, of God, which is the infinitude and which has nothing else in it but holy itself. I am the Lord and besides me there is none else Then in this understanding, shine your incorporeality forth and have in your awareness nothing but incorporeality, even though incorporeality through corporeal sense seems to consist of corporeal form. It is not corporeal, it is forever incorporeal. I am the incorporeal, and besides me, there is none else. And then, in that all-inclusive incorporeality, you have nothing to do but rest. I have nothing to do but rest. Why? Because as self-inclusive, all-inclusive, 
incorporeality, all is God. In other words, all is good. Nothing needs God. The only thing that needs God is our awareness if something ungodlike appears to us or will not yield and reveal its truthful form, its truthful state, truthful quality, truthful condition, truthful life. Hear it. The only thing that ever needs God is our awareness, not him, her or it out there. Him, her or it, or let's say him, her and it out there is God. Nothing changes that. The appearance of an ungodlike state is happening in here and doesn't even exist out there. Out there is fully God despite appearance. Your body is fully God, despite it perhaps appearing to be ill or diseased or injured. It isn't the illness or disease or injury is happening in here as belief. But the belief is not out there and never can be. We cannot extend belief. Oh, hear that? We cannot, it's impossible to extend belief into the body or into the world, giving us sick, diseased, ill, lacking, limited, unjust form or being or condition. Even as we're observing these things, the things themselves are nothing but God. The problem exists in here as unwitting belief. Clear the belief and we clear the sense. Meaning empty ourselves of everything but the incorporeal. In, out and throughout. Be the light shining forth, be the incorporeal shining forth, recognized as all despite the corporeal form of it or appearance of it. Then you have released sense. That which ye release on earth is also released in heaven, released in the good that it is, and there the image and likeness is freely available to your sense. Take into mind your body or an illness, disease or injury that you are suffering at the moment or somebody else or somebody else's body that is suffering in one way or another. Now, shine your light forth. Shine your incorporeality forth. So take in the body into your mind. And at first, probably, you're taking in a corporeal sense that seems very real to you. Now lift. And without trying to be rid of the corporeal sense, simply shine forth the incorporeal and keep it shining until you feel that belief in the corporeal dissipating and becoming the realization of the incorporeal, wholly the incorporeal, simply sensed in a corporeal way. 
work at this now and realize use your thoughts to realize that the body is incorporeal fill your sense of the body with incorporeality As you keep doing this, the sense of a container of body begins to melt. The edges of the body begin to melt in sense. The hardness of the body begins to melt in sense. The particular areas, organs, functions of the body begin to melt in your sense. And the body becomes illumined in sense. Palpably becomes incorporeal in sense. tangibly or let's say more tangibly becomes of one presence the one incorporeal without locality without hardness without flesh without organ function without different areas or mechanisms of the body, but oneness, incorporeality, the presence of life itself, the formless form. But be careful with that. Realize that all form is real, but is not the corporeality that it seems to be but is incorporeal. Nevertheless, it's still form. Now, in this higher sense of body, you can understand and now feel the truth of the fact that in incorporeality, in light, there can be no dark whatsoever. There can be no actual corporeality whatsoever. Just as we can say in the sun, all we have is sun. All we have is light and heat. And the sun is incapable of having dark or cold in it. Well, the incorporeal body is incapable of having, first of all, corporeality in it, matter in it, but also is incapable of having any quality but God, but the incorporeal about it. It's impossible to have illness, disease, injury, pain, suffering, age, locality, even name, in incorporeal being and body. Can you sense that? All this body is, is the incorporeal. 
is God. There is nothing else happening as this body but God, the incorporeal. The all-inclusive and self-inclusive body of God, of the incorporeal. It is impossible for light to have dark in it. It is impossible for the incorporeal body to have anything but God in it, about it, as its function, its organ, its mechanism, its feeling, its experience. Now, again, for the sake of class time, we will move this on. But if you needed to spend one hour in this way until you are released from the belief in a body of matter, a body of flesh, a body of organ and function, mechanism, locality, name, age, then do so because it is this very work of lifting out of the belief of anything about the body but God, lifting into God, into the incorporeal, and feeling that release feeling that freedom of the incorporeal body, for either your own body or another's, that releases that so-called illness, disease, injury, and the imagery of it, the false picture of it. Now, once you feel that release, now it's time to rest in God, in the incorporeal, and let go. God be God in you and as your experience, as your sensed body. Let God reveal itself. Let the sun do its job. Let the sun reveal its light and heat. Let God reveal its body. It's ageless, perfect body. And now, very quickly, having released the belief about the body, about the appearance, about the problem, God is able to reveal its true body, the image and likeness of God as the body to your sense. To use time and space language in pure truth you are the body that you're now seeing truthfully experiencing truthfully i am that i am and now that i am clean of belief now that i have released the earth i have released heaven and nothing in the universe can now hinder or stop the truthful body from being perfectly evident. And there it is, we have our so-called healing. And again, as we have done this, many thousands have found their release this very minute, or at least this hour. And you feel it. Don't ever believe that the feeling of God happening is contained in you, we've spoken about this, but not out there as the omnipresence of the universe and far beyond. But let's clean up our universe first before we become concerned about beyond the universe.
Take your finances into mind and everything to do with them, your work, your job, your profession, your business. Your money, your bank account, your credit cards, your wallet, your purse. Take it all into mind. And probably you have a corporeal belief at the moment about all of this. Well, now lift above it all by shining your light forth, shining your incorporeality forth, infusing everything to do with work or career, profession, business, bank account, credit card, money, sales, revenue, margin, profit, Clear yourself out of all of these beliefs. Remember, remember, I think this is something that truly needs to be understood. We do not need to mentalize about anything of experience, meaning self, mind, body, world, universe, and everything in it and of it. Nothing, nothing needs to have thought taken about it. We do not need to somehow let God know by moulding our thoughts into whatever it may be, that we need health, life, harmony, Prosperity, love, peace, joy, happiness, purpose fulfilled. Hear the Master, take no thought for your life. That means the entirety of life. Do not analyse it. Do not believe the way it appears to be. Do not believe the way the mechanics of life and of the body and of business seem to be. Do not get your belief out there and start connecting the dots and believe that the only way that money comes to you is through the vehicle of something or other that we call our work, our career, our profession, our business. It isn't true. Why? All is God. All is the incorporeal. Does the incorporeal have anything mechanical about it? Have any cause and effect in it? Have any matter in it? Have any activity in it? Have any place in it? Have any vehicle, avenue in it? No! The incorporeal God is omnipresence. And that omnipresence is I. There is no place but I. Your consciousness, your very being, the very presence of your being, your consciousness, your aliveness is God, is I, is omnipresence, is the incorporeal. And all that experiences is a magnified view of the one I that you are. You are the infinite I, the universal I. The whole universe extends out from you in sense, but not in reality. And remember, there is no reality to sense in and of its own self. So we can look out into our financial world into our work, our business, the seeming mechanics of money and avenues of money. And we can realize that not one aspect of any of it has any reality in and of its own self. All of it 
is just sensed I. Hear it. The whole world of money and its mechanics, its seeming cause and effect, its avenues, its vehicles, the work that's required in order to have money, has no reality to it in the slightest. It is all simply sensed I. Objectively sensed incorporeality. Now, come home to I. And realize I am the very presence of God, of the incorporeal, of all. Nothing is separate from me. Nothing is out there. Including money, including customers, clients, patients, students, friends, love. Nothing and nobody, no amount, no place, no condition exists out there. All is. Nothing has to become so. All is. Now, lift into the incorporeal and infuse your whole world of finances with the incorporeal. Shine your light forth. Do it now for a few seconds. And remember, you're not actually shining your light forth geographically in time and space. You're shining it forth right here where you are once you've brought your whole world of finances, and you know that this applies to everything, every category of life, once you've brought the multitudes here, just by bringing them to mind, that's enough. They're existent now in your awareness in the only place they actually exist, which is within you. And so shine your light forth right here. Infuse everything right here with incorporeality. And again, for the sake of class time, we'll stop here. But you take as long as it takes until you feel that release from the belief in the appearance of everything to do with finances. But now, as soon as you have felt that release, you have achieved the master's instruction. Whatsoever ye release on earth, ye also release in heaven. And so now it's time to simply rest in the all-inclusiveness, the finished kingdom of God, of the incorporeal, because nothing needs healing in the incorporeal. Nothing needs prospering. Nothing needs understanding. 
Now that we've used our understanding, used our logic to infuse all corporeal sense with the incorporeal, now we stop and simply rest in the incorporeal, knowing that nothing but the incorporeal exists in it. I am the incorporeal, and besides me there is none else. All avenues have gone, vehicles have gone, financial mechanics have gone, cause and effect have gone, money itself has gone. And remember, we need not, in fact must not, mentalize about any of this. We do not need to hold in mind the amount of money we believe we need. We <laughs> do not need that amount of money, whatever that amount of money is, because we cannot need it in God. In fact, we cannot have any amount in God other than the whole of God itself. Don't think of amounts, whatever you do. Don't go to God so that today's or this month's demands can be met. Because if you do, you have a number in mind, and that very number or that very belief is enough to cut the whole of God from your experience. Don't do it. Get rid of it all in the incorporeal sense of all. The rest takes care of itself. Never take thought. Never be concerned about anything to do with any of experience, including that of the body and including that of finances and, of course, including that of everything else. We must lift above all thought and all thought taking. We must lift above the whole corporeally believed world. We must lift above the man drowning on the floorboards of the stage. If we're there with him, we can't help him. Well, we could swim out in the imaginary ocean and save him. True. But that doesn't stop him from drowning again tomorrow. Our work is the Father's business. Our work is to dehypnotize ourselves and everyone in our atmosphere everyone in our consciousness. Our work is to lift above that which seems to be, both the bad of it and the good of it. Lift above cause and effect. Time and space, mechanics, here and there, avenues, vehicles. This is our work. It's our one work, and it is the one work that frees all in our experience. In heaven. Heaven is freed in our experience. When we shine our incorporeal light into and as underline the word as, everything, everywhere. And then rest in the incorporeal. Be the rested state of God being, because as God being we have no other work, or we have no other state but rest. There's nothing to do other than the work of God here on earth, which is exactly the work we're hearing about. And when your whole sense is filled with the light, the warmth, the peace of incorporeality, then when you feel completely satisfied, simply get up and get on with your day, realizing that your finances are now fulfilled. Don't be concerned if the appearance is not yet fulfilled. 
Just don't go back believing that appearance. Stay in the incorporeal and then watch how quickly the appearance is filled with sufficiency, if not 12 baskets full left over. The incorporeal presence is incapable of being in lack or limitation, ill health, disease, injustice, immorality, a lack of love. Hear it. The incorporeal presence, the incorporeal sense, is incapable of anything, of being anything but God-like. You keep the incorporeal sense alive in you as all, and you watch the miracles that happen in your experience, here, there, and everywhere, and watch how nothing in the universe, no one in the universe, no condition in the universe, the apparent personal condition or thing, can stop your experience being filled with good. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Yeah, because the Lord state of being is the incorporeal state of being and universe, or earth. Therefore the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Do the same with relationship, the same with home, the same with family. The same with everything, everywhere. Shine your incorporeality forth as you're walking along the street, as you're doing your shopping, your marketing, as you're in the mall, as you're in a meeting, as you're on the telephone, as you're in class. There's nothing shining forth here but the incorporeal. There is nothing seen here but your incorporeal self, your incorporeal mind, body and earth. And for that reason, you, your mind, your body and your earth are full of the goodness of the Lord. Now, if you want to see much more of it than you may be seeing at the moment, then shine forth your incorporeality. And there it is. It's been there all the time. The goodness of the Lord. The goodness of God, the image and likeness of God, nothing but God. And now with your senses full of incorporeality, your whole universe full of the incorporeality that it is. And now that you know that the corporeal sense is nothing to be concerned about. It's just sense. It's perfectly good and real and natural. The master had it. Buddha had it. Every saint and prophet had it. And you and I have it. And now that we know that it is nothing in and of its own self, therefore nothing to be concerned about, nothing to make effort for, nothing to even think about, to take thought for, to mentalize about, in that way we have freed the corporeal sense and all its being, objectivity, place, cause and effect, time and space, to be the heaven that it truly is, and now the image and likeness of God. In other words, its truth is clearly visible to anyone who lives as the incorporeal being that they truly are. Now, let's take a few more verses of scripture for some wonderful authority. And as we hear these, realize that I, referred to in scripture, of course, is God, is consciousness. But now let's particularly realize I as being the incorporeal. And remember, the incorporeal is full of God, is alive as God, is God. It's not static. It's the very power and presence of God. We can say that we're tapping into the very power and presence of God as everything that presents itself to us, whether it be a thought or a form, a place, a human being, so-called, finances, business, 
neighborhood, family, doesn't make any difference. When we realize that the incorporeal is all, then as we fill ourselves with an alive incorporeal sense and feeling, we can say we're tapping into the very power and presence of God. Now, you surely don't believe you need any more than that in your life. And of course you don't. So let's realize I as the incorporeal as we hear these now. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. You see, that's Genesis 15.1. If we truly understood that when we first read it, we didn't need the rest of the book. Or let's say books, which the Bible truly is. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. All right, let's close the book and get on with the Father's business so that we can experience that shield taking place in our practical experience, and indeed it does, and experience thy exceeding great reward, which we certainly do experience, in the incorporeal state of being and universe. as long as it's alive in us. You can probably hear that we're having the most gorgeous high wind tonight. It's cleaning the world for us as we have our class. I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be perfect. In other words, as we walk in God awareness, we will witness ourselves, our entire earth and universe, perfect. God, the image and likeness of God. Why? Because when incorporeality is alive in us as all, all-inclusive experience, then nothing is blocking the evidence of God, as all actually is, from our tangible experience. All of God is visible as long as our senses are clear of belief. I am with you always. You see, I am with you always. Everything that presents itself to us is I. And let's say it again to make it very clear. If we are experiencing anything ungodlike about that which presents itself to us or our body experience or any other experience throughout the universe, it is because a belief is stuck in us here. The him or her or it that is presenting itself to us is just I, just God, in perfect condition, perfect order, in its eternal, beautiful, abundant, loving, peaceful, harmonious, self-complete state of existence. I am always with you. Lift into a conscious state of I and you perfectly clearly see I as everyone and everything experienced. I am the bread 
of life, the form of life. There it is. I am the corporeal that you sense. Therefore, all corporeal sense is actually the incorporeal. He that comes to me, he that comes to the incorporeal state of being and universal existence, shall never hunger. And he that believes on me shall never thirst. And I am the bread which came down from heaven. Out of heaven, out of the incorporeal. I am the corporeal sense of life, of good form, that comes out of, or as a result of, the incorporeal heaven. Indeed, we never hunger for any good. We never thirst for any fulfillment. When we live as the incorporeal state of being, the God state of being, which is all-inclusive God, with nothing else in it whatsoever. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And we can add, he shall consciously live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, is the corporeal form, is the so-called human or physical body, is the so-called material world, which I will give for the life of the world. Oh, can it be any clearer, my friends? Which I will give for the life for the truth, the image and likeness of the worldly experience, which is the corporeal sense of the incorporeal, the life of God as the form of the world. This is John 6.51. In John 8.12 we read, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There's our whole class by the Master stated in one sentence. <laughs> I have some way to go yet. <laughs> From John 8.23 Ye are from beneath from human material belief. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. That needs no interpretation, I'm sure. And here in John 9, 5, we read, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long as I am being the incorporeality of the truth of the world, then the truth of the world is evident, not only to me, but to everyone in my consciousness. but I has to be in the world. The light of truth has to exist in the world in order for the world to be revealed as its truth. That's perfectly clear. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. 
Now here it is. Here's the experience of living in the practical experience of the world. Going in and out. Into the incorporeal. Going into the closet. Into the secret place of the Most High. Going up to the mountaintop. And contemplating the truth. Cleaning ourselves out of everything but the incorporeal as all. And then going out, well, first of all, then finding ourselves, in the Master's words, saved, free, fulfilled, the very being and earth of God. And then going out into the world and being that presence amongst all in the world. I am the door. The incorporeal is the doorway. As we've heard a few minutes ago, we can tap into God, tap into I, tap into the infinite, the omnipresent, the good without opposite of God right here on earth. This is what the Master is telling us. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. All in our world is like the pasture. The land of milk and honey. The land filled with the goodness of God. Lift yourselves up and be saved. Lift yourselves into the incorporeal and there find yourselves fulfilled. Find yourselves filled with God, with good, universally. And then go out and you will find your pasture. You will find all of God, perfectly visible and real in earth. The thief comes for nothing but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The thief referred to here is the thief of belief. The thief that steals our spiritual awareness. It's the devil as referred to in scripture. The pairs of opposites, all of which is belief. As soon as we believe anything at all, even the good, even God, then that very belief is the thief, which as the master says, comes for no other reason but to steal. It has no other activity but the stealing of our spiritual awareness and to kill and to destroy. Isn't that interesting? Belief is, as we've heard throughout the classes, the pairs of opposites, which have nothing to do with God. But I, the incorporeal, am come am in your senses, in your awareness, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes unto the Father, unto heaven, to the freedom of mind, body and world experience, but by 
me, but by incorporeality. You see, what is I? God, the incorporeal. And so realize, the incorporeal is the way, the truth, and the life. No person or thing or condition, we can add, comes unto good and freedom and truth, but by the incorporeal. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Now, this is referring to the forms of life, the sense of humanity, mind, body, world, thing, condition, place. I am the vine. The incorporeal is the vine, the truth of the experience of life. And all form are the branches. He that abides in me, in the incorporeal, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I come forth from the Father and come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. This again is the coming in and going out of experience, coming into truth, into the mountaintop experience of pure God, pure incorporeality, abiding in the secret place of the Most High, feeling God, feeling the incorporeal abiding in us, filling our entire sense with itself, And then us coming into the world and finding good, finding the pasture, finding the corporeal sense of the incorporeal we are now filled with and fulfilled with. And then I leave the world and go to the Father again. This is John sixteen twenty eight. This is the way of truth, the way of healing, the way of infallible healing, the way of infallible visibility of God, reality and practicality of God, the earth filled with the goodness of the Lord. Finally for tonight, let's hear from Matthew in 9.28. Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord, we believe. This is what we must be lifted into. And the word belief is not belief, but trust. Do you trust that I I'm able to do this in your practical experience. We must have lifted sufficiently that we, with the disciples, are able to say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, truth. Yes, we trust you because we now realize sufficiently that you are literally the only. Trust in I in God, in the incorporeal as being all good. Not will be, or not can be made to be good or healed, but I am. There it is, I am. And that I, that I am, and that all is, is the incorporeal being, mind, body, thing, activity, place, amount, condition, 
world and universe. Let's rest for a minute together. For there is nothing to do but rest as truthful being and simply behold God becoming real and visible everywhere about. Thank you, thank you, my friends.